Hi, my name is Daniel Casey, and today we're going to be looking at an example of flood frequency analysis using the generalized extreme value distribution, also known as the GEV distribution. So for this example, we're going to use the data from the Little Southwest Miramichi River in New Brunswick. Uh, the station number is 01BP001. And here's the link how to get access to this discharge data. So when you put in the station number, you'll go down to the download discharge. And basically, this is the CSV file that I'll be working from, which is the annual extreme data uh, numbers or values. Now, this is the cumulative distribution of the GEV function if you need to use it or apply it directly, where you have the scale parameter, the location parameter, as well as the shape parameter. But if you want to calculate your QT for different recurrence interval, i.e. the two-year flood to the 100-year flood using the GEV, you can transform this first equation into the second equation by replacing your recurrence interval f to x by this equation here, which is basically uh, the link between the recurrence interval and the cumulative uh, function. So I'll be going into R, which is a, a program which you can download. Uh, it's an open source program. You just have to go in Google and search R project and download R, and we'll also be uh, using R Studio with this particular application. So this is an example of this program that we'll be describing in a few minutes. There's two packages that are required to run the GEV model, uh, which is this one and this one, specifically to run the GEV fit uh, using the maximum likelihood function and the QGEV. Like in any calculations that you are doing, uh, this is basically a, a, an example, but people need to make sure that they're, they, they know what they're doing before you calculate some of these uh, flood frequencies. And this is the final result. This graph is the observations of the uh, 60 years of data for the Little Southwest Miramichi for the daily annual maximum discharge, as well as the two year, the five year, the 10 year, 20 year, 50 year, and the 100 year flood. And this is plotted on what we would call a gumbo plot, which we'll describe this in a few minutes. So that's basically the end result. And the end result is very important that it is plotted so that you can see the relationship between your recurrence interval calculation, the GEV fit, for instance, against your observational data. So let's go into the first file, which will be the downloaded file from the website. And this is the, the file that you'll be getting. You will have to delete maybe the top line here just to make sure that you just you're just left with the parameters. This is your maximum daily discharge that you'll be working with. Also make sure that you delete any columns that do not contain one. I've described this in a previous video because the parameter one is for discharge. Parameter two would be water level, so you don't want to mix water level with, with discharge values. Now, if we look into the R file, which is basically this file, Let's go right at the top. You can do a few items here. We're basically just cleaning up everything, making sure that everything's um, cleaned up or you have no data into some of your da database. You can get the working directory, but you can also set this working directory using the uh, set working directory here to the source file. So basically you don't have to make any changes. So this is what I've done in this particular case. So if I look at get working directory, it will tell me if I run here that it is my sort of working directory that I'm presently having all of my files in the data and etc. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to read your data, and this is done using the command read CSV because it's a CSV file, and here's the name of the file in that particular directory. 
and it can, I can also do a summary of this max value. So it's going to read exactly the it's going to read the column, uh, and the column in my SV file is the, the, my, my my maximum discharge are under this column. So if I run this, run, it basically tells me that my minimum discharge was 114 and my maximum one was 861. Now we need to install these packages. If you have not installed these packages, then to run this, you'd have to remove this comment here and then install the package. But if you've already done so, so you don't need to do that, this is, this is my case. But you, knew, you need to run these two libraries in order to have these packages with you. So run these two packages. Now I'm just going to transfer from my data set data one and the column, which was the max value into Qmax. So that's just going to transfer my data into Qmax. That's fine. And I'm just going to create here a data frame. This is just a, um, a way of putting out my data into a, a matrix. So you run this. And here the P is going to be the results of my GEV fit of Qmax. So if I run P like so, this gives me the results underneath here. If you want to see all of the results, it's all there. But what I need to do from this, I need to extract from this results, this P value here, my, uh, my parameters, which are the location, scale, and shape parameter. And then I need to calculate the, diff the different flows for different recurrence intervals. So the two, five, 10, 20, 50, and 100 year flows. So basically I just run this, and that's gonna give me my flows as well as my parameters into this matrix, which will be QT. So run it. Now I'm going to define these rows and columns so that I can output them into a file. So you run these two. And finally, I'm going to write the results, all of these results into a file, which will call, which will be called 01BP001 GV out in this particular example. So you write, you run this. So it's basically done. Now, what I would do is I would go into this file and read it. Uh, let's find it. Let's find it on my drive. So it would be this file, which is the result. And now you can see that the two year flood is this 237 up to the 100 year flood, which is 880 and you have your GEV location uh, scale and shape parameters. What you need to do after is to basically plot this in Excel and that's what I usually do. So we'll go into, this is the, uh, the raw data file as, I, as, you, as we've seen before. And now if we go into this file here, you basically take your raw data file, save it in Excel this time, rather than saving it in, in, as, an EX, uh, as a CSV file. And all of the information on this side of this information is basically the calculation which gives me my graph here. So what you need to do is you need to copy your max values here, which are your discharge to this column here, which, will, which I will call Qmax. You sort them from the smallest to the largest. And you also put numbers here, which will give them the rank. So there's the rank is the first to 69. After that, you need to calculate the, the cumulative frequency of these values, which is given by this formula, the rank N, uh, let's put this like that. So it'll be N over N plus one, and you have 69 years of data, and it'll be one over 70 for the first, and so on and so forth. Now, the next thing that we do is we transform this value of x into another y value, which is minus log natural logarithmic of f of x. The, you take the log again and you give it a negative sign. And this will basically 
give you a gumbo plot. When you plot this on your y-axis, it'll give you the same thing as if you would carry out a gumbo plot, which would mean that if you had a gumbo type distribution, it would be a straight line on this um, graph. But if it's a GEV, it could be either a straight line or it could be a curved line, as you'll see in this example. So basically, you calculate all of these values from the first to the last. And this is just a formula using f of x, as you can see here. And at the end, you've, once you've done that, you basically copy your output file into this. You count, which is basically, this is the output file that we had from the R program. You just put the frequency of these values, the two-year frequency here, basically, which is calculated using the recurrence interval formula. And then you basically calculate the reduced variable here, which is basically an extension of what we had here. So basically, you just copy that over and you just delete this one, and that will give you the values. So the 100-year, just as a, as a check, the 100-year value gives you a, a f of x of 0.99, and it also gives you a reduced variable of 4.6. Then what you do is you plot these values in x, and you plot the discharge in y, and that gives you this this type of graph. So this is your observations. Here we plot two graphs. One is for your observations, and the other one is for the, the estimation of the GEV value. So the estimation of the GEV value are the here for the 2, the 5, the 10, the 20, the 50, and the 100-year event. And as you can see, they were also in the table. They were also in the table below. They were also in, the, in this table. So this is the part of the line that you plot, and this is part of the data points that you plot. Having done this, this gives us a pretty good confirmation that the GEV is fitting the little Solaris Miramichi data pretty well, and that's basically what we need to do. So thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully this was helpful to someone.